know you should keep everything, but at certain points, I know it's nothing worth it. Yeah. Sommeliers. I am Steffi and welcome back to Steffi's Wine Club. Today we continue on with part two of our series for Valpolicella wines. So as I mentioned before, but just a quick catch up in case you missed it, Valpolicella, nice little area in Verona, Italy. Get a bunch of wines from there including this lovely Amarone. So if you remember our little pyramid or tiers of Valpolicella wines I talked about but from our last video. It goes Classico, Superiore, Rapasso, Amarone, and then Recioto. So even though we're going to discuss Rapasso in this series, we're going to do Amarone now because I think that the way the Amarone production happens is really key to understanding Rapasso. And so we're going to talk about Amarone. It is the highest quality of the Valpolicella wines I'm going to talk about. Um, I didn't get a bottle of Recioto. Personally, it's just not in my price range right now. And I like to review wines that I've personally drank and had and I've never had a Recioto so far in my life so when I do I will definitely report and do a video on it but for now Amarone has definitely been a staple in my childhood home I mean I didn't drink it as a child but my teenage home with my parents who were very into wine and food and culture and now as an adult it's definitely something I'll have at a restaurant when I'm having an Italian dish it goes really well with pasta really well with uh, meat dishes like beef uh, it, it holds up really well to like heavy Italian comfort cooking. Which is amazing because you need to have a Italian cooking, Italian cooking is a special one. Amarone, like all Valpolicella wines, uses the same grapes found in Classico, and I'm sure you're wondering, well then what makes Amarone so different, and namely so expensive? And there's a lot that goes into making Amarone that does not go into making normal Valpolicella wines. Um, first, it's a late harvest wine, technically, so the grapes are left to ripen on the vine, which leads to more robust, intense um, flavors with more sugar in the grapes, and this really contributes to Amarone's very vibrant and bold style. After the grapes are picked, the grapes that are going to go into Amarone production are put through a process called pasito. And this means that they are laid out on mats in a special drying room and left for four to five months to let all the excess air evaporate out of them. Even though Amarone is considered a late harvest wine, it's very different from other late harvest wines. Usually when we think late harvest wines, we're thinking sweet, maybe even dessert level sweetness of wine, and that's completely untrue in Amarone. Amarone, first of all, actively discourages the formation of botrytis on the grapes, which is the mold or noble rot that grows on a lot of uh, dessert wines that are late harvest, harvest such as Sauternes, and it's a rot that also robs the grape of a bunch of its water and makes it more concentrated and sweeter, but it adds a very sort of sweet, almost cloying flavor to the wines, and we do not want this in Amarone. So Amarone, people who are growing grapes for Amarone, really do not let botrytis grow at all on the grapes. Second thing that makes it different from late harvest wines is it's actually not sweet at all. It's a completely dry red wine and this is because uh, people who are making Amarone use strains of yeast that can hold up to higher levels of alcohol. So the wine can reach higher levels of alcohol before the yeast dies off, therefore converting more of the sugar into alcohol and thus we are left with no residual sugar, no actual sweetness. Sometimes with any of these products with um, the grape skins left on for that long and the drying, just the intensity of the flavors and the alcohol can sometimes give an illusion of sweetness. Um, and it also comes from just that smoothness on the palate and your easiness of drinking it. It doesn't always seem quite so savory, but it is a very dry wine. There is no residual sugar left. Uh, it's part of the style of Amarone, you're not going to get a sweet Amarone, although you can get some sweet reds from Valpolicella region. So after the drying process of Pasito, the grapes are then pressed for what's left of the juice. Now, the Pasito process makes sure that there's a lot less water, uh, and that means that the grape flavors are really not watered down. And there's also very structural tannins because the grape skin to grape juice ratio is diminished a lot, meaning there's a lot more structural components coming from the skins than in a normal glass of red wine. Another thing that really differentiates Amarone's from other red wines is a lot of these wines that are red wines that have very bold, fruity flavors tend to be grown in hot climates. So you get very jammy flavors, you get very bold, sort of like pie filling flavors, a lot more illusion of sweetness. Uh, sometimes rougher around the edges, and what this northeast section of Italy in Verona, Valpolicella Classico, allows for is for this wine to be grown in a cool climate, and then when it's dried out, it sort of mimics those same intensity that you would get with a very ripe, very sun and heat exposed grape, 
but in a cooler climate you allow it to maintain its acidity which is really important to the structure of this wine and why it goes so well with food I know what you're thinking, this all sounds amazing, what is the drawback of Amarone? Why am I not drinking this every day? And the reason is, unfortunately, the price point. Amarone, at the bare minimum, is going to be $45. That's what I got my bottle for, this lovely Amarone della Valpolicella. Um, but that's like the bare minimum for an Amarone. You're going to get anywhere between $45 to $80, maybe even $90 or $100 if it's uh, very high-end Amarone. Uh, the great thing about them is you can sell them for 10 plus years. I've heard even up to 20. So you're buying a $50 bottle of wine now. Just think of how much that would be worth and how amazing that's going to taste when you age it for that long. But it is a waiting game if you want to buy a cheap Amarone and have it really age up into something beautiful and amazing, even more beautiful and amazing than it already is. Um, and to get those ones that have already been aged, it is very expensive. One of the main reasons for this cost is the drying process. You think about it, all the water evaporates, that's a lot less volume you're getting every time you squeeze the grape. So it takes about twice as much uh, grape volume to create the same amount of wine. And then you also have to age it for at least two years in wood, which takes a lot of money to buy the barrels. And two years is a long time to wait before releasing a wine. Houses that are making Amarone really have a lot of overhead, so they have to charge more for this type of wine. And it's so delicious, it's definitely worth it for those big, amazing Italian meals you're gonna eat every once in a while, but unfortunately, it is not an everyday drinking wine. Now that we've discussed what Amarone is, I wanna discuss the Amarone I'm actually drinking today. So this lovely wine is the Tedeschi Amarone della Valpolicella from 2014. Again, this is a quite a young Amarone. Um, I could definitely sell her this for five, ten more years even, and I'm sure it would be even more delicious, even more complex. But just tasting this Amarone, even in its youth, you just get that sense of like layers and layers and layers of flavor, and it really unfolds before you. So I just wanted to give a quick glimpse at my tasting notes and what I noticed about it in case you ever try this wine or try this style of wine. So the main flavors I get in this wine is a very strong dried cherry, uh, especially on the nose. Um, it's a dried sour cherry. It's you, you can like just like feel the acidity on it. It's very acidic. It's sour, but it's dried. You still get that almost illusion of sweetness of dried fruit, which is really amazing. And then you get this these amazing vegetal notes when you taste it. You taste green pepper. I really noticed even a little bit of basil. I got a little hint of like these violet candies. They're called Parma violets. We don't have them here in Canada, but I've had them in Britain. So if you're living in Britain, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's just like this sort of like soapy, violety flavor, but very pleasant. And then almost the tomato. To me, I almost get like a little hint of pizza in the background, which just makes me really excited to try this with some pasta and pizza tomorrow uh, when I cook some Italian food. So I would definitely recommend having this with some food. It tastes amazing on its own, especially if you're going to break it apart and really compartmentalize all the flavors and really analyze it. But I think the way we're going to enjoy this most is if you pair it with a pasta dish. Uh, even pizza could go really well. Anything with steak or veal, a little bit of that umami flavor is going to go really, really nicely with this wine. This wine is 16%. I bought it for $44.95. So this is like the bare minimum you can spend on an Amarone. Uh, it's quite young. It is very good quality. Quality. It tastes amazing. I mean, $45 is not a cheap bottle of wine by any means. Uh, but you do have to keep in mind there are definitely higher quality Amarones than this. And when you're buying older ones, if you don't want to take the time to sell them, you want to buy an Amarone that's 5 or 10 years old, you're definitely going to be paying a lot more for it. So if you've been keeping up with Steffi's Wine Club, you know that this is part of a little mini-series I'm doing on the wines from Valpolicella, Italy. So this is part two. Part three will still be coming. It's going to be on Ripasso, the sort of middle ground and what I think is the best value for Valpolicella wines. So if you're interested in that, make sure you tune in on the next video. Uh, this has been Steffi's Wine Club. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill if you enjoy help a girl out. Uh, until next time, we're gonna keep it the same because we're still in Italy. Saluti!